So just to give you a slight introduction who, uh, about myself and the company I'm from. I'm from uh, Moxis, the uh, Moodle partner in Denmark, uh, uh, which are the largest uh, Scandinavian Moodle partner. We've been a uh, partner since uh, 16, at multiple universities, and, um, and uh, you can see the, our Moxis monster there saying hello to you. Uh, we're also part of the uh, Egmont group, which is a lot uh, Danish media conglomerate, which means that we are probably the only Moodle partner in the world with three Oscars. So, um, yeah, so I want to tell you a bit about uh, two plugins that we have created, which are actually open source and readily available for all of you to, um, to download already now. Um, but initially, I'm just going to talk about why is AI important also in teaching. Um, there's a study that shows that 80% of workers will have their tasks impacted in some way by AI. That's a huge proportion of, of, of uh, workers. And, and that probably means that we should start teaching our students on how to use AI. The research also finds that 20% will have more than 50% of their task impacted. This is a research done by OpenAI. It's a really interesting study. I've, I've added a link down here. Once you get the slides, I'll invite you all to, to uh, download this slide, look at the research because it's really interesting. So um, other studies show that currently, for example, in the workplace, only 20% 20, uh, 20 uses AI currently. Uh, but in the future, as many as 80% will need to work with AI. So there's a huge gap in in what we need to learn our students. So, and you, Moodle can probably help us with do that, to do that. Also, there's the uh, UNESCO AI framework, which tells us that uh, we need to start teaching our students about AI. And there's different aspects. They have, for example, the human-centered uh, mindset, where we start sort of dig into how can we understand AI and how can we work critically with AI. So I'm gonna, gonna give you a uh, now I have one more slide before I go into this sort of demo mode. Um, and one of these sort of critical thinking things that we're probably going to need is to be able to create great prompts for AI. You tried, I guess all of you have tried to create an, a prompt. Um, and um, you have to be aware that it's actually a skill set to create a great prompt. Um, OpenAI has their sort of short, never-ending prompt guide um, so it's really a skill set to learn to, how to create great prompts. So maybe we should teach our students how to create great prompts. So our solution to that is the um, AI Writer plugin in Moodle. Um, the idea is that we are using the Moodle assignment plugin and an instructor can then create a AI training which trains the students in creating great prompts. The course participant or student then writes with the help of AI and the instructor or teacher gives feedback to the student. So we'd like to learn how to create better, better prompts. So um, let's see how this uh, works in, in practical use. I've got a, um, let's see what I need to press play. I've got a great course here about, for K-12 education about Shakespeare's wokeness. And in here I've got a um, assignment which is made with our AI Rider plugin. So now we're going to the settings menu and setting up, we want to do an AI Rider assignment. And what we've done here is you can see that we've had a AI Rider submission and we're guiding the student on what to do in his, his, his um, assignment. The first step he needs to formulate, I'll just pause for a short second. The first step, we're asking the student to work together with an AI. In this case, he has to formulate three questions uh, one at a time, and then press uh, do AI magic. It'll be pretty apparent what's going on in the next step. Then we ask the student to go through a number of steps where he refine the text himself without any use of AI. It could be, for example, adding your own opinion, maybe your own experience with stuff. That's something that an AI definitely can't give you. Or check the AI uh, text for like biases and so on. So it's really up to the teacher at this point how to create good AI writing assignments so the students learn to work critically with AI. So let's start the, um, in this case our, our teacher also decides to um, add 
add a step where the student has to add about three lines about um, your own experience with wokeness. That's definitely not something the AI would be able to give me either. So now the teacher has set up the um, assignment and we're now ready to um, go back and, and our user here is already a student as well. So we'll just jump back into the critical thinking and add a submission. Yeah, you can now see the steps are there for the student. He'll, you can also see that he has five attempts to do this. And our student here, that's actually me, it's not really good, so his initial prompt is just asking the AI, was Shakespeare woke? And I'll get a, uh, some output, yeah, and uh, these, I'll now add another question. What were his views on women? I think he's gonna write the student. Yeah, let's do an AI match again, and um, yeah, for the sake of sort of the experiment, we'll just continue next and, and go to the next step. And now I need to review the chat bus answers and um, sort of explain what did I actually learn myself when I saw these um, uh, answers from the chatbot. I've learned a lot. And then the final step, add my three lines about wokeness. Um, so now the student has actually been able to engage with the chatbot, create a prompt, see the output, and work with the text, and sort of enhance in the text uh, and put in his own opinion. So that's pretty great, but we all know that you don't learn anything without any proper feedback. So that's also included in the plugin. So let's jump to the next section about what I would do as an educator. Yeah, so now I'm an educator, going back to the assignment. Oh, sorry. There we go. Now I'm an ed educator. I'll press grade. And what we're using is the Moodle grading module um, where it fetches the text and generated a PDF-like file with steps in it where you can actually see all the steps that the student went, th went through. So if we go back, yeah, I can see that the student initial prompt, I can add some feedback to my student. Um, so my student will hopefully be better at, at creating great prompts. Um, and it's all done by using the sort of inbuilt Moodle framework of uh, submissions and um, uh, feedback plugins. Yeah, so I can add even more. And, and, the, and what's great as, as well is that as a teacher can see every step what has been added by the student. So this plugin is uh, available online. Come talk with me, I can give you the link to the um, GitHub repo, but I can see the plugin in action. Um, the next plugin we made is called um, SmartLink. Um, and the, um, and the, one of our customers actually gave us a challenge, can we somehow make it easier for students to read some of the text that they're supposed to read? Because we all know they're not reading the links we're sent, putting in our, in our courses, and could we somehow enhance the experience any uh, more? Um, so what we have done in Moodle is to create a, um, let's see if this works, yeah, a Moodle course with links. So what happens is uh, when a student clicks on one of our smart links, um, he has the option of cho choosing, choosing between some predefined prompt that we have defined on a site level. It could be generate a mini quiz on the text behind this link, translate the text, or even add your own prompt to this. What Moodle then does is goes and fetches this web page that I'm linking to, taking the content, scraping the content of the web page, send it to an external language model, processing it, and then sending it back to the student. So pretty easy stuff, but it would actually take quite a while if you had to, were to do that in your uh, sort of copy-pasting text into ChatGPT. So let's see how that works in practice. Yeah, I have another course here, upskilling and reskilling in the AI era. And you can see this link leads me to a Danish article, which none of you will understand. 
uh, and the student in this case probably wouldn't either. So we're now going back and now we have the option of getting an AI version. And we're asking the AI to get a summary in five bullet points. Yeah, it's now it's English. So that's pretty great. Um, I could also ask it to do a mini quiz so I could sort of train my knowledge on the article. Yeah, and now I've got a mini quiz. In this case, as it always was AI, sometimes it generates stuff that I don't want to. In this case, it was in English and Danish. Yeah, and I can also write my own prompt. For example, um, translate the article into Spanish, which could be appropriate for this today. Yeah. And then it's translating, and it will be appearing in a second. Yeah, and now I have my article in Spanish. So not a hugely complicated plugin, but it can actually do some really helpful stuff. And just to let you see what is actually, because we want to help the student quite a bit. So instead of him having to write his own prompts all the time, what we've created is in the site admin tool. You can uh, actually set up what are the prompts which are available to the students in the different languages. So let's just see that you can go to the smart link. You can then manage the prompts which are available. And as an institution or a site, I mean, you can set up what other prompts available in your own installation. So only sort of the fantasy set uh, uh, limits your opportunities in this case. Yes, so um, that are two, this is our, these are two plugins which are open source for, by us and um, come say hi to me. I'll give you the uh, the link to the GitHub repo, and uh, hopefully some of you will decide to contribute to the plugins. I think there might be one quest, one minute for a question, if anyone has that. Yeah? Bueno. Gracias. Thank you for your presentation. The question is for what you've just showed last, the, the generation of the quiz and or questions and mm -hmm. summaries. Does that happen every single time that a student clicks on it or do you yeah. actually cache it? Because no. of course the results can be quite different. Yeah, well, we, we, no, we're not caching it currently, but that could be a great suggestion, for example, for a pull request. No, but <laughs> yeah, there's a question down there as well. Um, and there's no when once the the student answers the quiz, there's no you know grading going on or anything, right? It's no. It's the the idea would be it would be a help for the student to sort of enhance his reading. So uh, it would be like try and answer these questions while you're reading the text, but there's no sort of feedback loop going into it. So it's a help for the student. Yeah. Okay. Got yeah. it. Thanks. Yeah. And one more question. Could you? Uh, Tell us a little bit about uh, behind the scenes uh, infrastructure on how is, this is working. Yeah, Do we're using, uh, in, in, this was created actually two years ago. Uh, so this has been in, in, Moodle, in our Moodle sites quite a long time and this was before the AI subsystem was created. So they, uh, these plugins are currently using a, a open AI um, um, API. Um, but I think now the uh, 4.5 is out with the AI subsystem. So we'll, sort of switch them over to using the AI subsystem so it's quite easy to switch between between different providers. <laughs>